Welcome to another quick repair video. Today we're working on a 2003 Kia Sedona. We'll be doing front brake pads, rotors, uh, and calipers. So I'm gonna pull the brakes apart as if I'm just doing pads and rotors. Most people may not need uh, to replace the caliper. So if you're just doing pads or you're just doing pads and rotors, um, this video will be helpful as well. If you're only replacing uh, the caliper, you can actually skip a lot of this and just take the caliper and bracket apart as one assembly. The new caliper comes with a new bracket as well. But I'm gonna tear it all apart as if I'm doing pads and rotors and then later calipers. So stay tuned and we'll get that rolling. First to pull the caliper off of the bracket is two 14 millimeter bolts, one on top, one on the bottom. I like to, the side I'm working on, turn the steering wheel uh, out so I get really good access to this backside. So let's pull those off, 14 millimeters. Once that's off, move it out of the way. I have it suspended so it doesn't fall. Then we can take the bracket off in the back. Those are 21 millimeters, one on top, uh, one on the bottom. I already started getting that one out. These pads can come out now or later, doesn't matter, but taking the bracket off is the next step. Once the bracket's out of the way, now we have access to pull off the uh, rotor. The best way, this one still has the factory screws in it. Best way to get those off is with an impact driver. These always scare me coming off. Make sure you have the right bit or tip on it. I, I broke these loose already, so, but they always scare me because if they don't come off, then that's another hassle. But anyway, once you take these off, then we can beat on the rotor, tap it from the back if you have to, because it's getting replaced, so who cares? To prep the hub for the new rotor, just make sure it's uh, free of rust and cresties. I like to put just a little uh, thin film of anti-seize for the next rotor, but once you have that, uh, cleaned off and ready to go and you want to make sure that you clean off your uh, rotor as well They put a protective coating on it for storage Go ahead and spray that down with brake clean and wipe it off real good and now the rotor uh, and the hub are ready uh, to become friends I got the new rotor on if you do decide to put these back in you don't have to uh, I like putting them in because they hold the rotor in place when I'm assembling everything else if you do, I'd use anti-seize on the threads. They do not have to be tight. They can be good and snug, but they don't have to be uh, cranked down. They're not there to hold the rotor once the tire's on, because the tire rim will hold the rotor on. And they're not gonna fall out, because again, the rim is there. So just snug so the rotor doesn't move. That way, if you have to take them off in the future, they're not gonna be seized or locked in there so tight you can't get them back out. We also want to prep the caliper bracket. These come off and then you want to clean off these uh, channels here and those surfaces before you put on the new hardware. Always put on new hardware. They come with the brakes usually so just go ahead and swap them out. And then these slide pins you want to pull them out and lubricate them with a good uh, silicone paste as well. I'm not going to do that because I'm getting new calipers that have uh, brackets. Even if you replace the calipers with uh, new brackets, uh, it's still a good idea. Let me pull it out real quick. Um, it's still a good idea um, to pull these slide pins out and maybe put some lube on them. Supposedly they do it when they uh, rebuild these, but you just always want to be sure. If you're putting in this kind of effort uh, to replace them, just go ahead and double check things. And it, it makes you feel good knowing that Yes, it was done. The caliper's back on and torqued. These bolts torque to 65 to 79 foot-pounds, top and bottom. You can put the pads in at this point. The wear indicator goes on the inside bottom. And then once those are in place, we can go ahead and prep the caliper for uh, going over the top of the pads. Now I'm gonna be replacing the caliper, but I'll also show you how to push the pistons back on this uh, to get it ready to put on when you have a caliper with dual pistons, it can be kind of hard when you push one in, the other might want to pop out. And when, when you push this in, the other side comes out. So you're kind of uh, going back and forth when you're pushing them in. So one way to get past that is to just put a pad in there. And now when you push one side in, it'll help uh, draw the other side in as well. I have a brake tool that'll push these in. You can rent one from the auto parts store. Really, you just want to squeeze this piston to push it back in. If you're replacing the caliper like I am, I like to block the lines off so that I don't lose a lot of fluid. If you don't have this, that's okay. Just uh, keep in mind that you will be dripping a lot, so maybe having a catch pan or something underneath. Also, if you don't have this, 
Uh, it might be a good idea to top off or fill the uh, master cylinder up all the way to the brim so that when you lose it, you don't run the master cylinder dry. This bolt comes out here. It's a 12 millimeter, so we'll zip that off. The new caliper comes with a new bolt uh, and washer, so we'll make sure to install the new one on the new caliper. Also, in reality, if you're gonna be replacing the caliper, I recommend doing it before you have all this stuff on. So don't make it your last thing you do like we are here. Go ahead and do it before all this is on. That way, if any fluid drips down, it's not gonna get on your new stuff. Now, I'm gonna be uh, careful and avoid that, but just to help so you're not having to worry about it, when all this stuff is off, go ahead and replace the caliper, and then you just don't have to worry about your new stuff. So this is how the washers go. You have a washer in between the, the head and the line, and then you have a washer in between the line and the caliper. So I couldn't find a torque spec on this uh, bolt here, but the idea is that you want it tight enough so that it doesn't leak, but you don't want it so tight that you damage the threads inside your new caliper. So somewhere uh, in between there, I'll let you use your judgment on how tight uh, that is for you. Once the new caliper's on, these are torqued to 18 to 26 foot-pounds, top and bottom. After everything's on, if you replace the caliper, you want to go ahead and bleed the brakes. I just have it dripping right now uh, to fill up, but I'll go ahead and pressure bleed the brakes. If you did not replace the caliper, then really the next thing for you to do is put the tire back on, uh, take it for a, a good test drive, break in the new brakes, brake pads onto the new rotor, and you should be good to go. So this side and the other side are done exactly the same. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but there is a right and a left caliper. So if you are uh, replacing the calipers, make sure that you put in the right side in and that's it. I'm gonna do this side and then I'll show you uh, how I bleed it, uh, really simple. So this is the system I use to bleed it. I just have a little hose over the bleeder valve here and I just have it open just a little. And then that runs into an empty jug and the bottom of the empty jug is filled and that's it and then you just pump the brakes i do about 10 to 15 pumps and then i'll come back and check the master cylinder uh, fill it up do 10 or 15 more fill it up until there's no more air coming out of this and, and that's how i do it so i'm going to try and set up the camera so you can see the process so I'll, I'll do my best for that. But anyway, this is this is the setup, and I didn't come up with this. I saw somebody else do it, and I've been doing it for a couple of years now, um, and it's always worked out really good. Uh, quick and simple for a one-person brake bleed. Okay, so I got my hand outside the window, and then I'm gonna pump on the pedal, and, and you can watch it. So that was 15 times there. You can see there's still a little air left. So we'll go ahead and uh, fill up the master cylinder and do that again. And I'll do that a couple times until I'm 100% sure there's no air here. And that's how I bleed the brakes by myself. So that wraps up this video. After this is done, take it for a good test drive, break in the brakes, the pads and rotors, and uh, you're good to go. So thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.